Hello! Welcome to Here for the Romance, my little corner of the internet where I review and generally squee over romance novels. Today I am so excited to bring you guys my very first official Here for the Romance review of Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Thank you to Avon Books and NetGalley for the opportunity to read this book before it was published. Um, it must be said that all my opinions are my own and I was given a copy of this book in exchange for my honest review. I absolutely loved Get a Life Chloe Brown. I was swept up into the story Lee immediately and I was missing the characters as soon as I put the book down. This story has everything you could possibly want and that list includes, but is not limited to, cats numerous Harry Potter references. That's it. That's the list. Well, that's certainly enough to convince me to pick up a story, you made it a little more convincing. So let's talk a little bit about the tropes. We get a lot of really great tropes in Get a Life Chloe Brown, um, and that includes opposites attract, um, we've got enemies to lovers, and even a little bit of like enemies to friends to lovers for those of you who prefer that trajectory a little more. Um, this is definitely a slow burn romance. And we even get a little bit, um, kind of, sort of, nurse back to health. That last one's a little iffy because our heroine, Chloe Brown, has a chronic illness. And so while nurse back to health might not be the most apt description, there is definitely compassionate caretaking and it is so sweet. So as I mentioned, our heroine is Chloe Brown and she is a woman of color from a very tight-knit and loving family. She's a web designer. She loves vintage skirts and cardigans and chocolate and tea, and she has fibromyalgia. Our story opens with Chloe taking a seemingly harmless walk around her neighborhood when she is almost hit by a drunk driver. After receiving a post-trauma cuppa from the paramedic, which is possibly the most British thing I have ever read. Um, she kind of gets sent along her way and makes her way back home. Once home, she starts taking stock of her life and she realizes rather depressingly that if she had died that day, her eulogy would have sounded something like, the mind blowing boar had zero friends and never did anything that wasn't scheduled in her planner. So with her family bickering over how to properly take care of her, she decides it's time to make some changes. It's time for her to get a life. And the first thing on her list is to move out. <laughs> Redford Morgan, or perhaps you could call him the artist formerly known as Redford Morgan, is approaching his two-year anniversary of living in and taking care of his friend's apartment building. Just a few years ago, the talented artist made a big move out to the city, started breaking into the industry, and was beginning to make all of his dreams come true. Or at least that's what it would have looked like from the outside. What was really happening was Red was in an abusive relationship and he decided that he had to leave everything behind, leave the city, leave his relationship, and leave the profession that he loves so much. Now he thinks he's ready to maybe start painting again, but that's only if he can get his mind off the frustrating but adorable tenant in 1D named, you guessed it, Chloe Brown. So once Chloe successfully checks moving out off of her get a life list, she's got a couple other things that she needs to start working on. Number two, enjoy a drunken night. Number three, ride a motorbike. Number four, go camping. Number five, have meaningless but thoroughly enjoyable sex. Number six, travel the world with nothing but hand luggage. And number seven, do something bad. So she's on her way home from one of her regular, irregularly scheduled walks that her doctors have recommended when she realizes that there's a cat stuck in a tree. And with her new lease on life, she decides she's going to climb that tree and save that cat and nothing is going to stop her. So she manages to get up into the tree and get the cat without too much of an issue that is unless you consider every muscle screaming in pain to be an issue. But she realizes that she kind of overlooked the whole getting down part. So while she's stuck in the tree contemplating whether or not she's going to die there or whether or not she's going to die from trying to jump down, um, who walks by? Yep, that's right. Redford Morgan. 
So Redford is her infuriating and infuriatingly handsome superintendent. And they have been at odds ever since she moved into the apartment about two months ago. But of course, he can't leave her in a tree. And also, he secretly thinks she's really cute. So she begrudgingly accepts his help down from the tree. And what comes from this point on is um, the beginning of a friendship. Basically, they realize that um, they each can help each other with their new life goals. Redford is dipping his toes back into the industry of creating and selling art, and he needs a website. Chloe just so happens to design websites. Chloe, on the other hand, needs to ride a motorbike. And who but Redford Morgan owns a shiny electric blue hog. So they kind of work out a little bargain to help each other with these things. And this is kind of another trope that we get. I tried to look it up because I was going to call it Let's Make a Deal. <laughs> um, but I feel like this um, kind of bargain comes in a lot more with like a fake dating agreement. Um, so I, c I wasn't sure what to call this trope, but it's definitely a trope and it definitely works in getting the two characters to have to interact with each other. From here on out, there are about a million and one things to love about this story. The first being Talia Hibbert's hilarious writing. So there's the fact that the atmosphere of this novel is ridiculously cozy. Because Chloe lives with fibromyalgia, she's a lot more comfortable inside, in her um, comfy clothes, on her couch, um, with various types of um, comfort aids, I guess like you could call them. Um, and so a lot of the story is kind of spent in her apartment and it's just so cozy. She's always wearing something that's comfy. She's always like wrapped up in a blanket or like sitting on a super lush couch. It's just so cozy. There are hilarious sisterly antics. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, Chloe Brown does come from a very tight knit family. She has two younger sisters um, and they show up a lot in the story and they're hilarious. They're so funny. And one of them, I think it's Danny, is getting her own book, and I'm assuming that the other sister will be as well. There's a little therapy side story. Um, Redford was in an abusive relationship when he moved out to the city, and he decides to see a therapist to help him work through some of the trauma from that relationship, and I'm so here for it, guys. I love this representation so much. So then there's like everything British. We have a hero, who literally loves giving his girl orgasms and purposely holds off on sex so that'll be better for her. There's both characters being at fault for and accepting fault for what happens in the black moment, which that's pretty rare in romance novels and I really liked it. There's just so much guys, it's so good. So as tempted as I am to rehash this book chapter by chapter for you, I'm not gonna do that. Mostly because if I do do that, you won't feel the need to read it, and you definitely need to read it. Chloe and Redford, of course, have some hang-ups that they have to work through. Chloe's being that she was abandoned by most of her friends and her fiancé when she received her diagnosis, and kind of subsequently boxed herself into her own comfort zone. Red, as I mentioned, has a lot to work through from his previous relationship, and a big part of being with Chloe is constantly having to remind himself that Chloe and his ex-girlfriend are nothing alike. That said, their journey together will absolutely melt your heart and possibly your panties. As I mentioned earlier, this is a slow burn romance. So while they definitely are into each other, they wait for reasons and that buildup is super hot. And then when they finally get together, it's whew, so good. Typically with romance novels, my experience is that during the build up to um, the first sex scene, you're like, you're just like, oh, come on, guys, just do it. Do it already. And then they do it. And it's amazing. And then after that, it's a little less sexy because you don't have as much build up as you did before. Every scene in this book had me fanning myself, let me tell you. And it even got to the point where we were towards the end and I was like, why is this still so hot? <laughs> we learn that Chloe is a fuller figured woman and Red cannot stop obsessing and thinking about her lush curves. Because Chloe is super into vintage clothing, 
Um, she wears a lot of like skirts and cardigans and leaves a lot to the imagination, if you will. There's even one point where um, they've decided he's going to help her with some more items on her get a life list. And that includes going out for a drunken night. And he comes over to pick her up and she's not ready. And she's wearing this little robe like she just got out of the shower. And he's talking about how he's been lusting over her ankles for weeks. And now that he can see um, skin above the knee, like he just can't even. So yeah, there was really just so much love about this book. Um, the representation of uh, a woman with a chronic illness is really kind of what, what drew me in. Um, and the premise itself is also really, really cute, but it did not disappoint. I absolutely love this. I gave it five stars on Goodreads and I highly recommend it. Um, it's definitely um, a, in a similar vein of a lot of those romantic contemporary comedy style books that we're getting this year and it just makes you feel good. Get a Life Chloe Brown is going to be on shelves November 5th and I highly recommend you guys go get yourselves a copy. I will be reading through Talia Hibbert's entire backlog because I need more of her smart sexy writing in my life. That's all that I have for this review. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!